We're back with another set of secrets you probably don't know about. You might be wondering, how the heck are we still able to keep making these? And well, I just gotta say, Breath of the Wild is just that good. If you enjoy Breath of the Wild content, let us know by liking this video, as it takes a ton of work to put these together for you. Alright, let's go. Did you know that enemies can parry your attacks? They have a special animation for it, and you can even hear the parry sound effect. But it won't slow down the game like it does for you. Bonfires themselves are heavier than the bundle of wood that it's made from. If you need to weigh a switch down, throw some wood down first, then light it on fire to increase its weight. Boomerangs normally fall down if they collide with any objects, with some exceptions, including other weapons, which they will ricochet off and sometimes even reverse directions. Ancient weapons and arrows break crownless blocks. This also includes the blue flame. Have you ever been in this situation before? You smacked the stasis object too many times and now you can't stop it, and you have to see it blast off into the sunset. Well, one Master Sword Beam stops it completely in its tracks and resets the launch for you. Dragons can run into objects, making bumping noises against the environment. Check out Farage crashing into Gerudo Summit. Normal and ancient arrows slowly float back up to the water surface after being shot underwater. But bomb arrows are extremely buoyant, and if shot during the rain, they will pop out from underneath the water. Did you know that there's one weapon that can go straight through walls? Korok Leaf's Gust can go a small distance through walls, and you can take advantage of this in sneaking situations to distract enemies through solid objects, and even knock down enemies off of tall platforms from below. Did you know that the DLC falling treasure chests aren't actually treasure chests until they land? It's actually the same rocks that are usually bouncing around inside of shrines. There are multiple ways to light your way in the Typhlo ruins, besides holding a torch. Holding Daruk's protection is decent, but using lightning rod balls, holding multiple star fragments in your hands, and activating Urbosa's Fury as a sort of sonar radar are good ways to navigate the ruins as well. But a weapon smuggled torch and the master cycle is the brightest mobile setup that you can make. Alright, I've got multiple shield surf traveling tricks for you. If you have a good slick shield but it's heavily damaged, shield surf, then right as you land switch to a less broken shield. You'll keep the sliding properties of the first shield, but the durability of the second shield you just switched to. Most people know that snow and sand use no shield surf durability. But did you know that every path consumes no durability as well? Even if the terrain doesn't look like it, every tan colored path on the map consumes no durability. Tiny bumps will ruin your day though. You can also simply keep switching shields every few seconds while shield surfing to use no durability. Most people know that rock octoroks like to spit out sucked up equipment and even clean rusted weapons. But did you know that you can actually catch these items? It's a little tough in real time, so a guaranteed way to do this is to hop into bullet time right as the equipment is thrown at you, then you can grab it midair. Ganon's horse is special and has a bigger attacking hitbox than a standard horse. It even has the ability to reflect Octorok rocks right back. Also, you don't really give a second thought to fighting rock or treasure Octoroks. You simply attack them while they're above ground, pretty simple. But while it's protected, you can actually flush them out by activating Urbosa's Fury, shooting a multi-shot shock bow at the base of the item, or using a shock trap to flush the little guy out. Water and mud conduct shock arrows, but did you know that lava does too? Doesn't make much sense, but alrighty. Also, you've seen weapons conduct electricity before, probably hundreds if not thousands of times, but have you ever seen it move? Lightning Wand conductivity is special, and can be moved with the object, unlike normal conductivity with shock weapons or arrows. You can even stasis launch your electric current towards your enemies. A couple Bokoblins in Hyrule with large burnable weapons can sometimes get stuck in a hilarious loop. If they sleep close enough to the campfire, they will burn from the weapon, pick up the weapon, then search for the attacker. Then it will go back to sleep and drop the weapon and burn itself all over again. Basically, my last brain cell in a nutshell. Did you know it's actually possible to steal and even register an NPC's horse as your own? If any NPC is dismounted, keep bumping the NPC towards a mud pool, then use an amiibo chest to push the horse into the mud. 
the drowned horse will respawn as a rideable horse. Since the horse despawns if you go too far away from its owner, use the NPC hostage to go back to the stable and register it as your own horse. Mm. If this game had a karma system, this whole process was stink of bonus bad karma points. If you're going for efficiency and not too worried about your ego, I've got a couple enemy specific cheesing tips for you that aren't just sneak strike chains. Lazalfos are completely blind beneath their chin. So just come in from above, and as long as you don't knock them away, hit them as many times as you want. <laughs> Moblins can be cheesed with simply one flame blade and a piece of wood. Throw down a piece of wood at its feet after it missed an attack, then do a spin attack with the flame blade. Now go grab a snack, it'll be dead a minute later. Any Lionel near a body of water, which are here, here, and here on Master Mode, can be cheesed with a couple arrows and one strong weapon. Simply bait the Lionel to the water, then headshot it, build two Cryonis blocks in the front, then one in the back. This is basically a Lionel Jail, so simply jump on its back, attack, wait a second, then jump on again. Back attacks use no durability, so you're free to loop this until the Lionel's dead. Poor guy doesn't even know what's going on. <laughs> The Wolf Link Amiibo has an extremely rare attack animation. If there are multiple targets, he'll sometimes do his signature multi-dash attack, straight from Twilight Princess. Muldu Kings are specifically weak to electric attacks. Because of their iron skin, they'll do critical strikes every time, and do more damage than bomb arrows or ancient weapons will ever do. Igneo and Frost Taluses can be stunned by hitting them with the opposite element, and they'll eventually recharge their body parts with their own element again but you can actually strike them with their own element to recharge it immediately, letting you stun them over and over again whenever you want. You can footstool off of a choo-choo with a shield and get some bullet time. The hardest location in Breath of the Wild is obviously Death Mountain, where you literally catch on fire. It's so hot that the Sheikah Slate errors out on how hot it is. So you'd think right next to the border of Death Mountain is the highest recorded temperature at 102 degrees. Well, that trophy instead goes to the lowest point of Gerudo Desert, at this encampment here, which can reach as high as 131 degrees. The coldest location is in Hebra, and you might think that it would be at the very top of Hebra Peak. While it is definitely cold up here, the coldest area is actually this area at Paquita Stone Grove, which at the highest area of Paquita Stone Grove, reads at a whopping negative 82 degrees. Ouch. Enemies with burning weapons can do considerably more damage to you, but by watching a memory, it can instantly incinerate it out of their hands. Each piece of equipment on Link has a separate hitbox. If you hold a burnable object on your back and in front of you, right at the border of Death Mountain's hot air, only the equipment in bounds will burn. This hitbox is so accurate to the pixel that even Link's breathing will affect the equipment being in and out of burning bounds. The attention to detail in this game is pretty amazing. And that's it. We are still discovering new things consistently to this day, so this may be a series that never stops. If you enjoy Breath of the Wild content, be sure to check out our other videos, including expert reacts and breakdown videos. And for everything else, stay tuned right here on GameSpot. <laughs>